So just after covering tax incidence, we're going to look at calculating the effects of indirect taxes. Again, this is for high level only in the IBDP economics syllabus. So here's a situation in a market for a product where uh, there has been an indirect tax. Uh, this is uh, the demand curve. This here is the um, supply curve before tax. This is S1 is the supply curve after tax. We know that an indirect tax increases the costs of production, of producing the product, and therefore the supply curve will shift to the left. Now, uh, the initial demand and supply function here are SD, uh, sorry, QD equals 70 minus 5P, QS equals 10 plus 15P. If you equate both equations together, it will give you an equilibrium price of $3 and an equilibrium quantity of 55 units. This is pre-tax. Now, once you uh, get the new supply curve, the supply curve with the tax, you equate it with the demand curve, it will give you the new equilibrium price after the tax, which is $3.75, and the equilibrium quantity is 51.25 units. Now you can see, by looking at the vertical distance between the two supply curves, you can measure that the tax here is $1. But the equilibrium price has risen from $3 to $3.75. This means that the consumers bear $0.75 cents out of this $1 tax and the producers bear $0.25. Cents. So the tax incidence falls more on the consumers and as you can see this is quite easy to guess because the demand curve seems a lot less elastic or more inelastic than the supply curve. Now there are certain things that you can calculate from the curve and from these numbers that we just um, obtained previously the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity before and after tax. So the first of which is the government tax revenue. Basically, we said that the t a tax per unit is $1, and you can get that by measuring the vertical distance between the two supply curves. You just multiply that by the new equilibrium after tax. So basically, the government tax revenue is the tax per unit times the new equilibrium, which is equal to $1 times 51.25 units, which is equal to $51.25. This is the government tax revenue in this example. The producer and the consumer tax burdens can be calculated using the same process. We know from calculating the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity that the producers will bear 25 cents out of that $1 tax. You just multiply that by the new equilibrium, 51.25. It gives you 12.8125. So this is the producer tax burden. And this is that yellow shaded box here, that small yellow shaded box. The consumer tax burden is the remainder of the tax burden, which is 75 cents multiplied by the new equilibrium. It will give you 38.4375. If you add those two numbers together, it will give you the total government tax revenue. The producers bear 25% of that because they pay 25 cents per $1 of tax and the consumers will bear 75% of that, which is that green shaded box here. Now let's have a look at how the consumer expenditure changes. Consumer expenditure before tax is basically the price that they paid before tax multiplied by the quantity. So you multiply the pre-tax equilibrium, which is $3, multiplied by 55 units, it will give you $165. The consumer expenditure after tax, you use it, you, you calculate it using the same process. The new equilibrium, which is $3.75, multiplied by the new equilibrium quantity, which is 51.25, gives you 192.19, and it is this yellow shaded box here. The change in consumer expenditure as a result of imposing the tax is the difference between those two numbers. So you can see that before the tax, the consumers used to spend $165. After the tax, the consumers spend a total of $192.19. So there has been an increase, a total increase in consumer expenditure of $27. Now, if you look at the shaded areas in the previous two slides, 
you will see this area shaded here in purple, this is the total change in consumer expenditure. There has been a decrease in consumer expenditure due to buying less. It is this small rectangle here. But there's also been an increase in consumer expenditure due to buying at a higher price. And this rectangle here seems bigger than this rectangle here. So the net effect is that consumer expenditure will increase. Let's have a look at the producer side of things, the effect on producers. So producer revenue before tax, it's the same as the consumer expenditure before tax. Just multiply the equilibrium price before tax, $3, by the equilibrium quantity before tax, $55, it'll give you $165. The producer revenue after tax is basically what the producer receives. So even though the new equilibrium price is $3.75, $1 from that $3.75 will go to the government. So the producers will actually receive $2.75 for every unit sold. If you multiply that by the new equilibrium quantity, so 2.75 times 51.25, it will give you 140.94. And from that, we can easily calculate the change in producer revenue, which is basically the new revenue, 140.94, minus the old revenue, 165, and the, this gives you negative 24.06. It is that area shaded here in red. And this makes sense. Imposing a tax will increase the costs of production, so therefore, the producer revenue after tax should be lower than the producer revenue before tax. Now the last effect is the effect on consumer and producer surplus. So before the tax, this area shaded in blue is the consumer surplus before tax and this area shaded in green is the producer surplus before tax. Let's see how producer and consumer surplus is affected once the tax is imposed. So you can see that the producer surplus, which is the area shaded in green, producer surplus has decreased. Consumer surplus, which is the area shaded in blue, it has also decreased. The consumer surplus has also decreased. That brown box in the diagram here is the government tax revenue. So this area between the two triangles, the blue and the red triangle, this area here is basically the loss in consumer and producer surplus. However, this brown rectangle is what the government gets as tax revenue. And this leaves this red triangle here. This is the deadweight loss. This is the welfare that is lost that nobody benefits from. It is the deadweight loss of imposing the tax. And we know this from uh, looking at market failure and talking about how uh, imposing taxes does always result in a less than uh, socially efficient outcome for society. So there's always welfare loss that nobody gains or nobody earns.